89 adjusted. Oh my god! Hello, I'm Alaa, a third year medical student, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to study step by step for medical school and how to ace your medical school exams. I'm going to be covering all of my tips and tricks my step-by-step -step process and how to keep ahead of your content and achieve the top grades. If this is your first video of me, I'm Ella and I'm currently studying medicine in London. If you're interested in study tips, productivity, insight into the life of a chaotic medical student and more, then make sure you subscribe and like this video. Before we get started, I want to talk about Scrintle who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Scrintle is a visual space where you combine an infinite canvas where you can put your own mind maps, your notes and your thoughts. I have a personal discount code that can give you 10% off. Make sure to check out the link in the description description as well. I'm going to be talking about Scrantel a bit later in the video. Okay, so let's start by the step-by-step -step guide on how to study in medical school. I've written the step-by-step -step process here on Scrantel actually so you can get an idea of how to use it as well and we're going to be talking about it later in the mind map section. The first one is preparing yourself. This is sort of for the pre-making your notes and it's optional whether you want to be consistent with this or do it on a one-off if it was a harder lecture. But essentially it's where you review the slides. I found that personally I started implementing this in the second year and when I would actually read through the lecture slides and make my notes and go through my Anki as a second revision in the lecture, I felt like I was comprehending the content way more and I actually had the opportunity to ask the lecturer any questions if I did have any. But this is sort of an optional step but I think it really helps in being that extra more prepared. The next step is obviously what the lecture. I personally got into the habit of just using the slides and then if I knew there was a lecturer who would say extra information then I would actually watch the lecture. Now in terms of what to do when you are watching the lecture, so what is your note-taking process and what is the best most time efficient way? This is flashcards. There's a lot of different ways that you can take notes in lectures and I know a lot of people do very different methods. Some people write notes, so some people annotate the slides during the lecture and then make notes later and some people make Anki flashcards or flashcards of any form straight away. I tried to experiment with all of these different methods and I found that making flashcards is the best way and it's the most time efficient way. So I would actually start making flashcards straight away while I'm going through the lecture slides and I can show you an example of this right now with a sample lecture. So here we have a lecture on venous thromboembolism and pulmonary embolism etc. And I'm going to take these few slides on the Virchow's triad and I'll go here on my Anki. This is my Anki deck, um, obviously because it's summer now I haven't actually been keeping up with my reviews. Um, but let's just make a deck and call it venous thromboembolism. I always make my Anki cards on my iPad, I feel like the interface is much easier to do. And then we can start adding cards. So essentially the way I do it is I just literally read the lecture slides. I don't give myself as much time to understand what the lecture slides is talking about because it's something that I focus on later on when I'm actually doing my Anki cards. Um, but with this, for example, we're going to write a card saying... And that would be like a sample Anki card for this lecture slide, for example. And then later on we're talking more about what are the causes, so... And then like slide by slide I would keep doing this for all the slides to make sure I cover all the information. And that's essentially how I make my Anki cards in the lecture. Another feature that I really like in Anki, if you're using the Anki app, is those function. So this is really helpful for me when talking about drugs or when there's any drugs involved. Okay, let's make an Anki on heparin and how it works. And using the clothes, I would close heparin and then the actual definition. So it's an anticoagulant drug that binds to antithrombin and activates it. And I would close that. And then that would be the card. And when you actually go through this card, it's really nice because then you have, if you go through all the cards quickly, you have this sort of close function where you're asked about the name of the drug. And then you're also given the name of the drug and you're asked about the function. So this would be the way that I make my Anki cards in the lecture and as I mentioned before I do this while I'm actually going through the lecture slides or while I'm actually watching the lecture and I feel like this was the way that saved the most time when making notes in the lecture. Now what do you do post lecture? After you've watched the lecture how do you then review the notes and make sure that they're actually up there and not just forgotten. So with Anki, if you're using Anki, then you have to review your Anki cards daily. And I can't stress on this enough. Anki will not work if you're not reviewing them daily. If you're just leaving them, make the new cards and then leaving them to just do their own thing and sit in your Anki deck. 
until exam time comes, you have to actually be reviewing them daily. For Anki, I would recommend setting the max to 9,999, so the, the highest that it can go. If you're making Anki cards daily, you should be studying the same cards that you made on the same day and finishing them. So you shouldn't have any new cards that are piling up, you should be going through them as fast as possible. Essentially, the idea is that you do, you make your notes on the day and then you go through them, your first review is on the same day. This is how people would get away with studying, for example, for one hour, two hours a day, because they have that consistent schedule where they're doing reviews every single day. Okay, so now that you've done your flashcards, now how do you understand the whole picture? Because for me the biggest disadvantage of Anki or any form of flashcards is that you sometimes end up focusing so much on the facts and memorization and understanding the big picture less. So how do these different diseases connect together? This is where mind maps come in. And this is where I'm also going to talk about the sponsor of today's Scrintle. The Scrintle is amazing because it offers sort of a visual approach with mind maps and you can link a lot of notes together. So let me just show you a few boards that I made for exam studying and prep. You can start first with my medical student school notes. So this is sort of like a board um, for my medical school notes, as you can see. We have my to-do list for like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, just the days of the week. As you can see here, this is sort of column function where you can just add cards under um, each column. So on Monday, I can add a new card and say my to-do list from Monday, etc. Um, so it's really helpful to have. And then I organize things like assessments, for example, what are the different assessments I have, what are the weighings of the different years, and the, the Markovs for distinct merit and distinction. And I also have an like, overview of my placements for next year. And then just to have a look at the actual modules itself. So I made new boards, which is essentially you have this dashboard and then you can make boards in each dashboard. And you can add as many boards as you want. It's as I mentioned before, it's like an infinite canvas. So you can make it as big as you want. So this is a board that I made from musculoskeletal and this is uh, just exploring the, some of the different conditions that we learned for musculoskeletal pathology. So we have SLE for example, we have the epidemiology, the management, the clinical features and the investigation. And as you can see, you can sort of link cards to other cards like this, which is perfect for mind maps. And you can link cards like to more than one mind map, so you can end up having this huge visual set of mind maps and informations all linked together, which is perfect when you're trying to understand the bigger picture. And we also have rheumatoid arthritis, epidemiology features, and ankylosing spondylitis. And you can link different parts together if you want. So for example, with management with our rheumatoid arthritis, if I add any other condition that uses, for example, DMARDS or uses methotrexate, etc I would link it together so I can understand okay methotrexate is used for all of these different conditions so it's really helpful in understanding the bigger picture I also made a deck on clinical skills so just understanding and having all my clinical skills step by steps in one place um, so this is like some of our examinations. I wrote inside each one, I wrote sort of the things that I always forget when I do the examination. And then also I had an overview of the communication stations and the different acronyms that you would need to remember. So we have Socrates, CHAMS, we have SPIKES. So each bit in SPIKES just says what it stands for, it's so a way of testing yourself as well. Now the one thing that I really want to show you in terms of mind maps and how they're really helpful, this is sort of a board for my exam preparation. And I have another board for like how I did my Monday to-do list. Um, and as you can see here, this is the to-do list and this is how you can just make a mind map that combines everything but is also really visual, that you can remember all of these content really easily. So as you can see here, for example, I have ANA staining coming off the to-do list and they have perinatal pathology. They're not really related, but having sort of a visual display like this is really helpful because when I'm in my exam, I will remember that actually, oh, I made a mind map for Monday, my to-do list, and I remember perinatal pathology was there, cytomegalovirus was there. And you can add photos, you can really customize it, you can move things around, and just a quick overview as well of the other Thing. So there's a lot of templates that Squintel has so you can use it for other things other than just studying. So you have like a daily notes board here, you can sort of organise your life, your week, your to-do lists, you can have projects and like things, books that you want to read. There's also a brainstorming board which is really helpful so you have like your step one is your problem and then you brainstorm it, you have group ideas. Um, something that I also really found helpful in Scrintle is that you can have a database and you can search any card that you want in the database. For example we made a card on cytomegalovirus. So you can open cytomegalovirus and open the actual card itself and compare it, for example, to a condition that you have in, it's not really related to musculoskeletal, but for example. Um, so it's really easy to move around and you can add the card to your database. 
And another thing as well is that because it's browser based and everything's up in the iCloud, you can access all of these things on different devices, for example, your phone or your tablet or your laptop, etc. I also wanted to show you some other mind maps that I made uh, for medical school just to show you how to get the bigger picture and how you should go about writing them. So going here, I have my medical school notes. So this is kind of a collation of random notes that I make. This is after I make my Anki cards. When you're making these notes or when you're making these mind maps, you have to make them with the intention that I need to be really mindful and focus when I'm making these notes. And this is why I recommend making notes after you do your Anki cards, not before. Because when you make it before, you're essentially just writing things that you're going to be like, okay, I'm gonna revise it later. I might not understand what I'm writing down now. And then when you make notes after your Anki cards, that's when you've had sort of an idea of what to cover or what's in the lecture. You've had a grasp of the content itself. And then you're making mind maps after it. Then you're making notes if needed after it. And you have a better idea of what you're writing. In terms of mind maps, these are some really like basic mind maps that I'd make some Sometimes, for example, when you're trying to understand symptoms, I find it a bit hard to memorize symptoms when they're just a list given to you and they're all kind of similar. Going through a mind map like this, for example, I have kidney failure. What does it cause? It causes accumulation of voice and toxins. What would that result in? You would have fatigue, you would have pruritus, you would have nausea and vomiting, you'd have a lower appetite. Um, so having this overall understanding is really, really helpful. And I have it for other conditions as well, like dilated cardiomyopathy or, for example, higher left ventricular pressure compared to, for example, right ventricular pressure. Um, so all of these things are really important having mind maps. So going back to understanding the whole picture, um, you can make notes as well. So I make a lot of notes after my Anki cards if I'm struggling. For example, cerebellum, as you can see here, I just made notes on the actual topic. And this is uh, facilitated by my Anki cards as well and going and cross-referencing my Anki cards with these notes. And I have other things as well, like ear anatomy, coagulation cascade. If there's something that's really diagram me, I actually, with this coagulation cascade, I wrote this all out and then I transformed it into Anki cards. So I added it to my already made coagulation deck. Um, but because I made the notes and I felt like they gave me gave me a better understanding, I added that to my deck as well. So you sort of experiment with all of these different um, notes and mind maps. And most of the mind maps, I end up actually making them closer to exam time because that's when I'm actually like, okay, I really need to understand this because I can't memorize everything. But during the year, I usually just go through my Anki. If there's something that I'm really struggling to understand, then I would make some notes on it. Now that we've gone through the step-by-step -step process for how to tackle your um, revision throughout the year, these are then some tips that I found really helpful that, that make revision easier and are really important in getting those top marks. First one I have, which I think is really important, is to speak out loud when doing your Anki. This is the way that you ensure you are actually trying to actively recall instead of just reading the answer. The next tip is to mindfully make mind maps. Once again, so I mentioned mind maps and notes and I mentioned how you have to mindfully make them. You can't just rewrite them for the sake of writing them. Have study buddies. So that's something that I really recommend. Really helped me throughout the year. You have to find someone who has similar aspirations and goals like you so that you can pull each other towards your goal. I had a friend like this and we both had the same aspiration. We both wanted to get high marks. We wanted to work harder. So we'd always set up study days every week so having study buddies like this is really important another tip is it's way easier to not fall behind if you're ahead I would recommend if you have time and you're just chilling in your holiday I would recommend to actually try and go ahead so set aside some time this is something that I did in my December holidays I was essentially free for the whole holidays I didn't have anything planned and I would sit in the couch at home and just have my iPad on and try and make some Anki on some lectures really like I wouldn't actually put all of my effort into it so it wasn't proper active revision that you would do throughout the year but it just made it so that I actually, by the time my uni finished the content, I had already gone through everything once. And this is something that is really helpful. But it's also optional. Now finally, the biggest tip is to be disciplined with yourself. You can be motivated at the start of the year, but it's really important to carry that motivation and turn it into discipline. I'm not going to sleep until I do my Anki revision. Okay, no, don't sacrifice your sleep, but I need to do my Anki revision or my Anki reviews in the morning once I wake up. I need to do it and you have to have like a no compromise zone where there are certain things that you have to do and you have to be disciplined with yourself throughout the day. So that's it for my step-by-step -step study guide and some tips. I hope this has been helpful and remember to check out Squintel in the link in the description box and if you have any questions whatsoever about how to study or study methods please make sure to comment them down below. See you in the next video!